Good afternoon. My name is Cecilia Porter. I would like to welcome you to the H.J. Strather Real Estate Bidding for a Prayer Seminar Webinar. To those of you that are in the comforts of your home or in your business, and to those of you that are sitting that decided to come and join us today, welcome, welcome. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Strather, who is a well-known coach, developer, acquisitionist, and investor. I'm going to introduce to you by way of a short bio that's going to let you know what he's really about. Thank you. J. Strather is the chairman of Strather & Associates, a real estate development and investment firm located in Detroit. Established by Strather in 1975, Strather & Associates is responsible for more than $2 billion in real estate transactions and is a multi-level conglomerate consisting of real estate acquisitions, investment, development, and property management. After learning real estate appraisal and public adjusting on his own, Kurt began to make his mark in the real estate world by arranging complex multi-dwelling unit transactions around the city. Across Detroit and across the nation, developers, city governments, and community organizations are taking note of Strather and Associates and its ability to generate a level of excitement never before experienced in our central city neighborhoods. For decades, these communities have been imploding. So now, Herb Strather and his partner organizations are building entirely new neighborhoods in what previously were some of the most dangerous, undesirable, and seemingly hopeless areas of Detroit. By the mid August of 2007, the city of Detroit marked an historic occasion as the Hotel St. Regis reopened after an extensive renovation. Ever focused on the redevelopment of Detroit, Strather, along with his investors, completely restored and modernized the newly decorated St. Regis with more than $14 million in improvements and investments, making it the only black-owned Hotel St. Regis in the world. A strong community supporter, Herb Strather serves on a host of boards and committees, but is most active in the Optimist International Organization, devoted to empowering young people to be the best they can be. Thank you, thank you so very much. First of all, I would like to thank everybody who has joined me today and is listening to this webinar, seminar. I promise you I'm not going to take up all of your time, and this will be some of the best time you've ever invested in your life. The, the one question is, why are you here? What is your purpose? Why are you doing this? What is your goal? I suppose that you're here on this seminar because you would like to best find out how you can succeed in bidding on property. The name of the city seminar is Bidding on a Prayer. And we're talking about the 10 to 15 mistakes that you make, that's most commonly made, that's made, that's most commonly made and how to avoid them. But i tell you why I'm here. Um, one of my goals in life is to establish the next generation of developers that's going to redevelop Detroit and see to it that we take our proper place in the world. You know, and that's something that's very emotional because this is a very historic time for our city that I think that I'm well prepared for. This is the largest bankruptcy ever in, the, in human history, if you can imagine that. The largest bankruptcy ever we are experiencing this. Detroit, an iconic city, the city that I was born in, the city that many of you are connected to, otherwise you maybe wouldn't be listening to this. We have a challenge. And right now, this seems to be the worst of times and the best of times. And it depends on how you look at it. Me being an optimist, us being optimists here, we're going to take and look at it the most positive way and, in fact, the most realistic. We have a brand new mayor in town right now. We have now a whole new general economic outview. General Motors is hiring more people than anybody outside of Silicon Valley. I'm talking about engineers and computer geeks. This is something to be good, be really pleased about. We have 95% of the fresh water in the United States and 25% of the fresh water in the world. And it is becoming a very scarce commodity. And the thing is, the sooner or later, you're going to have to come here. Now, you can just ask Pepsi about that. They sold four and a half billion dollars of uh, Southeast Michigan water all over the world. But where were we? Where are we, Detroit? 
Why do people all over the world see the opportunities that we have, and yet we don't see these opportunities ourselves? Or yet we're not, we're not taking the, the advantage of it. And please come in. We're not taking the advantage of these opportunities that are before us in our city. Indeed, we're having people come here and eat our own lunch in our own city. So what is my purpose? To convince some of you. Those of you who have a burning desire, there's a requirement I have too. But you got to have a burning desire to be a developer. And it's not just for the money. If you really want to be a developer for the money, you can go out in the green fields and develop. That's the suburbs. I mean, everybody wants the suburbs. There's almost guaranteed dollars and cents. I'm not interested in developing suburbs today. Right now, I'm doing something that is philanthropic. So if you want to do this in your heart, it's philanthropic, then I'm interested. Because I can teach you something that you cannot learn at the University of Michigan, Harvard, or Yale, or Wayne County, or Wayne State, or Michigan State. Now, it just so happened that we're, we're going to be doing a great joint venture with a local uh, college, I believe. I won't, uh, it's architectural school, I will say that before I make the announcement. I won't make it right now. But it's what is so great about it, and why we're going to do this joint venture, is because they're going to teach the theory part of it, and I'm going to teach the, the, the actual part of it. It's not going to be teaching. I'm going to actually do it. We want to learn by doing. The best way to learn how to do it is to do it. That's the best way to learn how to do it. So I'm looking for entrepreneurs that want to be developers in Detroit and other urban cities in America and around the world. Urban developers is the key. And if you want to be an urban developer, then you got to learn how to do it. And ladies and gentlemen, since I've done $2 billion in deals, I think I can do that. Now let's get on with the show. Because I'm not here just talking to you and just trying to sell you on being a developer. Either you got it or you want it or you're not. Now if you go to my website, if you, those of you who are here now in your packages, it's a set of goals. And before you do anything, you got to establish your goals. I suggest make an appointment with yourself and go away two hours somewhere by yourself and make it by appointment so you know 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock Saturday I'm going to Bell Isle and I'm going to just sit down I'm going to think about what I want to do with my life. We're talking about set goals and if you're going to do something with houses, different of you, many of you have different goals and, and you're gonna and, and we want to know what those goals are, but it starts with a bigger picture about what are your general goals in your life. Because real estate, this can help you accomplish that, yes. You know, because real estate is things that you're gonna invest in, live in, and you know, flip, keep. But you 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 got you can't do anything without real estate. But what are your goals? Your your, your goals and how is real estate fitting in? So if you decide that real estate is gonna fit in, you're gonna have to bring something to the table. You're going to have to bring something to the table. You're either going to have to find a deal, fund the deal, but that's cash. Finance the deal, that's a credit score. Fix the deal, that's contraction skills. Or flip the deal, that is sales skills. You're going to have to bring something to the table. And the question is, what do you bring to the table? But God is good. Because the most important thing you can bring to the table is the skills. I'm sorry, it's not the money. Money is important, but you can get the money if you structure proper deals. Uh, that's what I've done in my whole life. I found deals that were undervalued, structured them, pulled the equity out, joint ventured them, refinanced them, flipped them. We're talking about finding and structuring a deal. You could look at something, somebody else could look at something. You could see 200000 in the deal. You get the deal, run the performance, structure the deal right, get the deal financed, and you know you can do it A to Z. Because you don't necessarily have to have all of these skills yourself. Finding the skills. So you may not have the skills to get out and find it. Hang around with me. I'll show you how to be an expert. We're going to do a deal that we're going to say you're going to make $10,000 in 45 minutes. That's going to be my claim. In 45 minutes. You could, there's so much opportunity. That is just a whole class all by itself. Finding deals, structuring deals, but today we're talking about the auction. Because a lot of people, they see homes on their, on their block, they live next door, the homes are down the street, they're intelligent, they're police officers, they're teachers, they're lawyers. Go figure! The house is still there years after 
Why haven't somebody bought the house? The house is next to them. The house is going for 15 cents on the dollar. If you got a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, it was going for fifteen grand. Okay, real estate is double, so it's thirty. But the good news is there's a buoyancy in the marketplace. It's like thirty to sixty, because sometimes you know there's a great buoyancy, and that's what gives us the value to take advantage of the buoyancy in the marketplace. You say buy low, sell high. Just have to prove the value of sixty. But given the right set of skills, you can prove whatever value you want. Today, you can look at houses and say, well, what is that house worth? What is that house worth? You see, wait. That house, it's a nice house, six up there, it's a nice bungalow. It's worth between 30 and 60. Well, just think about that statement. When in our life have we ever said something is worth between 30 and 60? We might say it's worth between 30 and 40, 10 to 15, or you know, 50 and 60, but I know 30 and 60. And it's true on every block. You can find something worth 30. You can find something worth 80. It better be worth 80 because they still owe 80. So think about the board scene. Think about where it's going. Think about how much further we got. Why should anybody feel sorry for us? We got a billion on the table. One billion dollars. That's what Detroit has sitting back here on the books. Discount for sale. 22,000 properties. 465 million in a set value. So why should somebody feel sorry for us? I want to know where are the developers? They're going to eat our own lunch at our own table. Yes, we have a city that's turning, turning around and others see. As a matter of fact, most of the sales nowadays are not African American, and that's good actually. I'm talking about in certain areas, Woodward, Midtown, Downtown, in certain select areas of Northwest Detroit and up, and up up and down Jefferson. So we got a new players in the game. We got a whole new generation of buyers and this is not happenstance like we got the people who want to buy. No. This is forever a new generation that is claiming Detroit. Whose parents lived in Detroit and they're coming back. And they're having an accident with the African Americans that's leaving. They're trading houses. Imagine that. Got the greatest values right here, and we're sitting here and not leveraging it, not taking advantage of it. One billion dollars. Where are the community groups, the neighborhood groups? Okay, let me keep going. Underwriting. So you're going to have to bring either finding, funding, financing, fixing, or flipping, and you don't have to bring all these, and none of you have all of these. Nobody here in this room are listening to me. And I think we have. 81 people listening right now. None of you bring all of this to the table. You bring some of it. You understand? But not all of it. Not even me. I, I'm not a contractor, really. But I can get something fixed, but you're not going to see me installing the furnace. I'll act like I know how it looks. But let's talk about what we primarily came here for, because I want to give you something and show you something. Very serious, and I want to get right down to it. Kojo, keep me on time here. The key to a successful bid is underwriting. And you know what? You're going to participate in the auction, like I said, because you don't know how to go find the owner. Somehow you ain't been able to find the owner to make an house on your block. So the auction presents a chance for a whole bunch of properties. There are 22,000 properties at one time. And they're going to go for pennies on the dollar. I have bought houses for $500 that the rent is $500. Go figure. I got my money back the first check. And I bought more than one like that. But can you figure that? People have had mortgages on their houses for $100,000. The homes went up for bid, for sale. They were bought for $500. The mortgages got wiped out, and the people didn't do it. They didn't buy it themselves. Can you imagine that? Because the banks are not going to pay the taxes now to prevent it from going into foreclosure. The banks are saying, no. It's a $100,000 mortgage. It's only worth 10 The mortgage, the taxes are four. I'm not going to put four to chase 10 So the answer is no. So they go up for sale. $500 minimum bid. Nobody bids. Or somebody come along and bid 500 So that's it. Now these people are paying 900 a month. But how about some of you who are smart? You say, I'm going to buy it back. But you buy the mortgage back in your own name. And you redeem the mortgage, for God's sakes. You know, knowledge is very important, by the way. You can't buy the property back in your own name. Let's get on to this. 
So what you don't bring to the table, you can find. And in this class, and in Strather Academy, we have the resources to carry a deal. Now, it got to be a juicy deal, by the way. We use these residential properties as examples because they are still income. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples in a minute to show you how you can take, and I'm going to sell you something for $1 down. And you can make $10,000 and keep it and make thirty or $40,000 for $1 down. How's that? I'm going to show you this right now to give you an example of leverage. I'm going to show you that. At the same time, I'm going to show you a uh, 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 how you would buy a property at the auction. But you have to underwrite the deal. And what I mean by underwriting, first hit the streets. Go hit the streets and walk down the street. Knock on the door and talk to the people in the occupants on the homes you're going to bid on. Never bid on something you haven't underwritten. How do you know what's inside the house? How do you know who's inside the house? What the condition is? What you're going to get yourself into? You got a homeowner wanting to fight? I don't want to fight them. No, I'm here to help. I won't bid against a homeowner. You understand? So you have to do the underwriting. At Strider Academy, we send you out in teams. You know, you have to be a lady and a guy, especially if it's an ugly guy. You understand what I mean? You be scared people coming up to the door. You understand what I mean? So it'd be teams. You go up, you knock on the door, you give them a card, you introduce yourself. It's an underwriting process. And we screen out the house and we figure out which ones we're going to buy. We line them up. We know the date the bids come up and we know what we're going to buy. That is one of the steps. Um, but, but, but there, there are some other steps, in, and you got to run a performer. When I say running a performer, if you're going to rent it, what are you going to buy it for? What is your real value? Some people think the only thing you pay is the bid price. That is not true. You understand? What is your total cost in there to buy a property? They're shocked a year later that they, that they had to pay the taxes too for this current year. When they say, well, I didn't even buy it until October. Well, why do I have to pay the whole tax, not the prorated amount? You understand what I mean? And then, so let's understand what your cost is. Let's add it up all the way down. What is it going to cost you to renovate this here? Let's look at the whole thing. And there are some things that you cannot touch unless you look at. So we're going to run through some performance to rent, to flip, to live in. I make that last. I'm going to take it out of order. But I want to talk to you about just a few of the biggest mistakes and how to avoid them. One of the things in your underwriting, how you, one of the mistakes you make is you do not... Um, Check the the eighth floor. I'm going to say the room, the, the eighth floor. There you get special assessments. There you get uh, uncapped values. You've got to get an actual tax bill and look at the tax bill to determine what the uncapped value is. To know what the property tax is only is not good enough. What is the uncapped value? In other words, you know what uncapped value is? Once you buy this property, the value uncaps. And here's the new value. Wouldn't you like to know that before you bought something? But even worse is special assessments. When uh, the city council says, okay, this is a dangerous building, we're going to tear it down. And when it gets to the point of uh, being authorized to be destroyed and torn down, some properties have gotten there. They may be on the list to bid, and yet they're going to be torn down in three weeks. Now, wouldn't you like to know that? Well, let me tell you something. I've made every mistake it is, including that. Indeed, I bought their commercial building on Grand River, and I did not check special assessments. And someone called me up and said, Herb, they're tearing your building down. I bought a restaurant, 12 grand. So I make a, this is 150 grand. I made 100 grand on it. I'm sure I made $100,000 on the building. On Grand River, 14921 or something like that. And gosh, they turned my building down. I ran over there and said, hey, stop, stop, stop. They said, sir, you have to move out of here. I said, no, baby, I'm sitting right here, and you ain't touching my building. They called the police. They removed me, and they tore the building down. So I'm suing you. Went got a lawyer who would work for the city even, you know. I said, I want you to get my money back. She came back later on and said, you know something, i got to tell you something, my friend. You, it was public record. You didn't check it. We haven't got a claim. That's one of the biggest mistakes. Oh, so that's, that, that, that's, that's a beginner's mistake. How about the big boy's mistake? Oh, you make your big mistakes. You know what those mistakes are? You buy too much real estate. 
Too many deals. You can't buy too many deals. Don't load your mouth up too much. Ago. Don't forget, buy what you can digest. Don't worry, it's going to be another auction next year and another auction. There's plenty of auctions now. It's not just Wayne County auction. Buildingdetroit.org is running auctions. You understand? Every Thursday, there's an auction on the 13th floor, and there's only a dozen people buying. And we're going to talk about that auction one day. Let's talk about that auction, where you get you get foreclosed out, and the day before the auction, the day before the bid, is when the lender calls and tell you what they'll take. And usually it's 10 cents on the dollar. And I just wonder how many of you knew it. Most people don't know it. It's just knowledge is what we're talking about. But let's talk about a couple other things. So the big boys, you buy too many properties. That's a problem. Let's talk about the homeowner who's losing their house and don't know how to persuade people not to bid. Well, you know, all is fair in love and war. So, nothing stops you from putting a tarp on your roof. And who's going to bid on a house with a tarp on it? Because the most expensive thing about a deal is a roof. Your house, tarp, tarp is $150. Kojo will help you put it up. Right, Kojo? Uh, you understand what I'm talking about? You know what a tarp is? A blue tarp. Now, if you're going to go look at a house and got a blue tarp, are you going to be being going? No. I got a friend of mine bought a $200,000 house like that, right next to it. He had a $200,000 mortgage. We put the tarp on it. It worked like a charm. He bid in his bottle. And very few bidders. Very few bidders. And, and he's a very popular guy. You all, you all know who he is. Wow. Now, there are 15 big mistakes, and there are plenty more from, from the security point of view all the way up to um, re renovating. There are plenty of mistakes, and we're going to be able to go through all of those and to, give, and, and to tell you what not to do. Now, we're going to have a, a class on the 13th and 14th of September, and that is going to be a boot camp. It's going to last two days. It's going to be at the Renaissance Center going to be downtown at the Renaissance Center. Then you're going to have another shot, some of you, and that's going to be the actual live bidding class in October. That's that's doing the bid. It's going to be Wednesday to Thursday. That's going to be eight days, and we're bidding. We're going to go take our list, and we're going out bidding and buying. Al Jazeera Television normally travels with us, and we'll probably be on television all over the world. That's going to be about 30 people. It's, going to, it's only going to go about, because we can only give them about 30. So it's going to be the first 30 that we think that is right, and it has something to do with the order that you buy it. <laughs> but not only that, we, we want developers out of here, you understand? So you, you, you do have an opportunity to go through the boot camp and see what we're talking about. Our, what you need to succeed, we have for you. And you can get started anytime you get ready, but we'll talk about that. So the question is, why should you invest in yourself and in the deal? Me, I don't have a choice. It's a little emotional. I don't want to start getting too emotional about it. But you know, I was born here, Mac and Mount Elliot. I said, I'm gonna. I was born here, buddy, and I'm dying here. You're gonna take me right out here. Just take me back to Mac and Mount Elliot, where I was born. That's what I say. You understand what I mean? That's right. Just take me back where I came in. It's the way I, way I want to leave out. See, it was a good run. But you got to, but, but for me, my story is that I stuttered, had bumps all over my face. I was in speech therapy, and I said, if I ever get out of here, I'm going to come back and redevelop my community. Because people left here and went to places that had names like Rose Lawn, Green Lawn. Hell, I was on, I was, I, I was on the lower west side after being born on the east side. I'm the lower west side. People did better moved out of the hood. They moved into northwest Detroit, which was great. But now northwest Detroit is not northwest Detroit. It's Bloomfield, Birmingham. They're in the suburbs. See, right now they have abandoned Detroit essentially. And some of you listening to me have too. But I forgive you. <laughs> I just want you to get involved in the redevelopment of it. Now, I shouldn't have to persuade you about making money for yourself. I shouldn't have to persuade you that real estate is selling for 30 cents on the dollar, and that's double from last year. And there's a long ways to go, and there's a lot of buoyancy in the marketplace. 
And with the movie man on there, one other thing that's very interesting. Go home. Look at find out if you can buy a house for $75,000. You know what you're going to find out? You cannot do it. You can't buy a house for sixty seventy dollars in Detroit because you're not going to find one. Because it, it, the homes, when they do come out, they'll get so many calls on them, they immediately gone. So tell me about this demand. you got this huge demand for housing. Well, what's the deal? you got thousands of houses that you could put in five to $10,000 and flip them for fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Well am I missing something? Is this Detroit? Well then why aren't you, why aren't Detroit is doing it? What am I missing? Can somebody help me? Do do you not believe it's true? Of course it's true. You can just look at Zillow. You can just go home right now, go to multi list right now on your computer and see what I'm saying. So obviously it's true. So why are we sleeping? We're sleeping through the greatest recession ever. Sleeping through the greatest opportunity we will ever have. And others see our opportunity. They're coming from China, the Netherlands, Europe, France. Coming here, eating our lunch. Taking our deals. <laughs> you know what? The, they went and bought the free press building for four million, right? Then they turned around and sold it back to Rock. For eight billion. I mean, these people see our advantages. You know, we kind of come around slow. You understand what I mean? Now, so you should invest in yourself because it is the right thing to do. You make money and you redevelop your community. So there are several reasons that you would invest. One, if you want to home yourself, if some of you are interested in the home that you want to buy. For yourself. There are going to be some opportunities. Some of you may want to invest because you want an income. The guy was arguing about the fact he had no income. And the house next door, this is a true story, the house next door went for $6,000. $6,500. And the buyer put a few thousand dollars in there. It had a Section 8 tenant paying $860 a month. Now, the gentleman had a 80000 in his 401k. So why didn't he just take and buy the house, put the tent, and he's going to get, get his money back in one year? And look how much money he would have made, thirty or $40,000. So don't you think we could probably resolve some of our own problems if the opportunity is there? A long time ago, you had to have cash, credit, or collateral. Today, you have to have a computer, a cell phone, and a car. <laughs> and you really don't have to have the car. You could travel by bus and look at something, because I had someone do it, by the way. That's what I tell you. They made their money, and they didn't have a car. You understand? Because finding the deal, structuring the deal, for, for to take the value out is the most important part of it. And there are so many pieces of value there. So you should invest to redevelop your community, and you should invest for your family and your future. And I'm here to convince you to, to invest. And those of you who are selected to be developers, you're going to have an opportunity to be a student, to be an intern, to be an associate, to be a partner, and to be a principal. And then a, a student is just learning it. I'll just give it to you. And you can absorb it as fast as you can absorb it, and you can ask me anything. And then an intern, you'll, you'll come in here. What we want with interns now? One set of interns is doing nothing but the research document. Finding deals, the legal news, finding those deals, buddy. That's where the money is. Don't forget you got six month redemption rights on properties when they're lost in legal news. I don't care who buys them Thursday downtown. We can buy them and flip them and make millions without even investing money. Right. You understand? It's about knowing. So we got researchers, we got marketing. Those are the key things. Is researching is very key. Those who are going to do some marketing that would assist. And there's one more. What was it? Research. I don't have it here. But we have three different interns. I think that we left off the intern. Don't worry about it. Research, marketing, development. And development. Right. And development. And that's what you like. And development interns. In other words, how do we develop a community? What's the first step? Step, step second step, third step, 
Because like I said, you may have went to one of the prestigious universities. You may have learned the math. But you can, I can't pull you out and say, go put a MISTA application in and go score an application. You won't even know what I'm talking about, scoring an application. You understand? If you have, you have to get your, your service grants in order to support what you're trying to do and who you make these hookups and what kind of programs they are. You have to sell your tax credits. You know how to do that? You know what tax credits are? You know the philosophy behind them? So it is more than just the theory. It's putting the two together. And that you're going to learn uh, collectively with what we're doing. Now, before I, I get into this running the performer for you, which I'm fixed to do, I do want to tell you about Ms. Coleman, and she may be coming in today. She said she's going to try to make it today. One of my students, she took the class, it was $500 last year for the live workshop. And um, she paid her $500. And, and when you find something, there's a commission of $500. You get $250, and the, and the broker gets $250. So we got a lot of people who want to buy, they got their cash up. So we, the students are finding deals for them. How are we going to do it this year, too? We got some big check writers that said, find the deals, we'll put the money up, we'll split them, we'll buy them, we'll give you a fee, whatever. But it's an exciting environment by which to find deals. So she found enough deals for $500 to buy her a four flat, a two flat, and make $1,200 cash. She took away $1,200. Now she listed a bunch of properties. She must have had $2,500 altogether. She bought the four flat for $500. And she bought the two flat for $500. They both was at Highland Park right off Woodward. First house. Nobody wanted to bid. Think about that now. Just think about that. Woodward is hot from downtown to 8 Mile Road. I don't care if it's Highland Park. Think about that. That I offered her 10 grand for her four, four flat. She, she wouldn't take it. I said that's good. So she made a thirty, forty thousand dollars one week. She said, "Don't use her full name because she was getting a divorce and she didn't want to explore about it." <laughs> so let's go for performer. Let me give you an offer that you cannot refuse. What is it? How does a performer work? Now let me bring up this screen, and I'm going to show you what a performer is under no circumstances. Stances, should you ever do a deal without running a performance? What I'm offering those of you who would be interested is an opportunity to learn under the coach. Learn to run performance. So we're going to bring this up on screen and we're going to go over the performance. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's coming. This, the screen is coming up. Just give us one little minute. Um, this is one of the items that you're giving in your package. If you take the course. Um, now, trying to figure out. I need to have it down a little bit. That's interesting. You got something you can put down on it. We're going to straighten this out for everybody in a minute. Yeah. There we go. Oops. Okay. There we go. That's pretty good, right? Okay. Now, what we have here is a pro form. And at the bottom of the form of there, a tab. This is a cash and rehab, and this is a new mortgage. So what would happen if you were going to flip, flip? The deal. Now, this first part has to do with income property, which uh, if you're going to buy it and get a new mortgage, which I'll deal with the other tab. But let's just say if you were going to buy this and flip it, what would you do? Let's start with right here. Let's say your bid purchase price is $5,500. Your closing cost is $3,500. That's the fee that you have to pay the bid. There's $1,500 for insurance usually. This, if that is if you want to insure it, if this is one single house and it's occupied and has value, I would definitely say that you're going to insure it. If you bought a whole bunch of houses and they're empty, I would say no, you're not going to insure it. Because the amount to carry those these bad boys is, is very expensive. It, that would be a choice. You, you could weigh it out if you really wanted to insure it or not. Uh, total acquisition cost is 82.35. Now you got renovation costs below. 
So let's just go below and see what the renovation cost is. You got, say you have a thousand dollars furnace. A furnace, you can put a brand new furnace in for a thousand dollars. You can put a furnace in for a thousand. A brand new one usually is about thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars, but there's so many used furnaces for sale. You can get you a very, very good furnace for a thousand dollars, and I would practically say it's new. Electrical and lights are five hundred, let's say. You got bathroom fixtures, somebody ripped out the toilet and the under in the sink. So say you got a thousand there, you got some carpet you want to put down, you're going to paint it, and you're going to clean the weeds up and stuff. So, I mean, that's pretty typical. So $5,500 is a very, $5,500 is a sizable amount to pay at the bid. All right? Because most of the homes wasn't going, you know, but uh, most of the homes were going under $10,000. Even 2500 and and really around 1000 So let's say a few years ago. So your resale, 45000 Less commission, less other uh, less title, quiet and title, other could be surveys the like, quiet title. Now, do you know that in order for you to flip a house, you got to quiet the title, it's going to take 90 days? Do you also know if, if you're going to acquire the title, if you're going to flip a house, you're going to have to wait six months before you flip it, or you have to get two appraisals, and nobody wants to be getting two appraisals. So, so more than likely, you're going to have to say, this is how much time it's going to take, and this is how I'm going to have to do this. Your net sale price in, in this example, if you take out commissions of 7%, survey and other, uh, which is mortgage title, mortgage, mortgage title insurance also, and then, um, no wait, you wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be mortgage title insurance unless uh, you use that title insurance. It would be a survey though. So your net sale price is 39850 So you, your total rehab, and acquisition was fourteen thousand nine fifty. So you make twenty five thousand dollars. You make twenty four thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars. I mean, when even when I mean, we've never had a chance to make that kind of money on deals. And this is a psychological depreciation. Supply and demand does not warrant the houses to be down this low. Why haven't the houses increased? The houses have not increased because the bank will not allow the value to increase. I I've sold plenty of houses that I haven't been able to close. I've sold at least four or five of them. So right now, if you want to buy a house, people say, do not make it subject to an appraisal, make it cash. The last house I sold, I had a $220,000 FHA deal on, and I had a $205,000 cash. Which one do you think I took? I took the 205 cash, because when you want to take the down more FHA, they come back and say, the last house only sold for 179, which was true. So George Washington and his house sold for 179. So how are you going to get all of this value. You understand? They're trying to tie it back to the past as opposed to the future. What is the supply and demand what people are willing to pay? I had one around the corner in Norfolk Detroit, it was 84,000, they shot it down. So all of the all of the deals that people put offers in to buy that the banks have shot down and none of us know where, where what these deals are, where these deals are, but they're not reflected in the marketplace. We know that. But you can only hold it down so long. Plus, we do have the option of suing the appraisers and the banks. This is engineered. This is an engineered value. This is this this value is engineered to be repressive, to be to make to be pushed down. But this is an opportunity for you as an investor. This is an opportunity for you as a Detroiter to get involved. If it's temporarily pushed down, psychologically pushed down, let me ask you a question. How could it be less if the rent's the same? Well, let's go back and say if the rent is still seven hundred dollars, why is it selling for eighty thousand dollars? It used to sell eighty thousand. Why? How is that possible? How is the rent the same and the price is worth only a third? Of course there's great value. Think about it. So here it is. Now let's look at a new mortgage. Now here it goes. Let's look at the very top and see how this goes. This is how you run a performer. First of all, you fill in the assumption sheet. Follow me very carefully. I'm going to blow this up too so everybody sees it. The cap rate for right now, and, and we give you instructions in this column. And here we say the cap rate is 10%. Let's just use that for now. This example is two units. Vacancy and collection factor. Let's say this is two units 
And there is a third unit upstairs that you're going to make it to that, that, that's a, um, because the reason I'm saying this is because I got to do it with the jets like this on the south. But it's really another unit. And they're going to, the buyer's going to live in that little unit and rent downstairs. Let's just say that theoretically that's what this is. Well, there's a third unit there, and we're not going to put it in the performance, we'll call it the two units. But let's say that you're going to live in one of the units. And, uh, you know, here, okay, I, I, I got this as, as, as two units, so maintenance factor is 10%. Insurance cost per unit is about 700, maintenance is about 600. Now, you may want to know how do you know this, Herb? Because we know it, and here is where you follow our notes here. For apartments, insurance usually run about three or four hundred dollars or two to three hundred a unit. For houses, eight hundred to twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, somewhere. We pay only nine hundred. A bunch of our students are in our master policy so they can keep their costs down. But the maintenance, six hundred eight, eight percent management fee, four hundred dollars for water sewer, two fifty cap replacement, and that's for appliances, carpet that you have to replace, three percent growth, five percent operating expense growth per annum, 5% interest rate, 360 months, 30 year term, 644 debt constant, and you're going to finance 96.5%. Two units went for 650, the next year maybe two units of the, of the future projected rent growth two years from now would be two at 700. So sometimes you get projects that have low rents. So what you got, you got gross income at 15.6 minus 10%. You got property taxes here. Let's say your property taxes normally run about 10%. But in Detroit now, they're running about 5 to 7%. So you got $1,150 for property taxes. You got $14,000 for property insurance. These are automatically filled in. So as you fill in that column, it automatically fills in. This is a performer. I would never buy another department running the performer. Even myself, I run it real quick to see how I look. If my expenses has got to be between three and four units, you know, everything got to make sense. Well, somebody just wants to smoke up my butt. You understand? So I got, uh, excuse that terminology, uh, maintenance and repairs, uh, payroll and taxes. It's, there's no payroll and taxes on two flats. A four flat, you got to get somebody to test the and maintain the places. But you, you consider yourself payroll and taxes. You are the one going to be doing it. Property management fee. And I don't believe in hiring outside property managers. This is your property management fee. You got the mortgage you note. Know, and the property manager, all they got is state is a stupid management fee each month. So I don't believe in it. And I'm going to wrap all of this up in five minutes. So there's a, there's a water, it's 400 unit. The landlord will have to pay it on the two flat. If it's a simple house, uh, uh, they can pay it. They even have to try to have them split it. That's politically a little hot potato sometimes, but you can do it. Normal capital and pre, uh, replacements is $500. They don't need to spend it, just put it on a little side. Reserve account, one day you'll need it when they move out, blah, blah, blah. The legal amount is 100 The tax return got my extra work called administrative marketing. Okay, so if you add all of this up, it comes to thirty to 3300 a unit, and it should grow between three to 4000 a unit right there. So it's $7,300. Now, at a 10% cap rate, just take this time 10, this time 10. Oh, you really divide it by 10, and you, and you come up with, the value between 73 and 86. For the purpose of this, let's say it's 68 to 50 because they will not give it to you. Now, I'm going to, this year, if somebody's interested in this house, the, the amount down is $1. $1 deposit. I'll let you buy this house. It's in back of Mary Grove College, for example. It's a real house. Um, and so let's say that we could engineer a value of 68. And that's possible. That's possible because some of the houses there are in the 60s. So they may allow it to go to 68. The, the original mortgage was 114,000. It's not fair yet. But let's take this house. It's in 165.59 Kentucky. Okay, so 68. So you offer the seller 45. The seller can pay 6% of the closing cost. 6% of the sales price towards your closing cost. You know what? It could be more because it would be 6% of this number. Not 6% of that number, that was a mistake. I can, I can make this even more, but that's okay. Uh, 2400 let's just say that for now. Uh, re re the repairs are 17 3000 for like, if you have a license, a commission, 
But here, if you have something that costs ten thousand dollars for a retail price, let's say that I'm going to fix something up in your house, and it costs me twenty-five hundred in material. Material is twenty-five, labor is twenty-five. That's five grand, and I double. In other words, my profit and my expenses have to come out of the out of out of the five thousand in gross I made. That's my operating expenses and my profit, my overhead, and all of that. But my actual material is like whatever my material costs. My, my labor should do the exact same thing that I, I, I can keep all of my contractors in check. If, if my labor is more than the material, well, you have to explain to me why. Now, maybe they got some great deal on the material, and I say, okay, I'm not going to punish you for it, okay? But theoretically, if you grew up a house with a seller, if you have this, if I'm a seller, I can enter into an agreement with you to do exactly what I'm saying right here. And this is, now look at this, what's fixed to happen. I, I can get you 17,000 in credits for repairs. And out of that, you're gonna spend about 5,000, thank you sir. So 12,000 profits you're gonna make. That means that you're gonna be doing some of the work. You're gonna be engaging. If you can get engaged and you can paint and you can do some of the work, then this is how your picture would look. 34000 is your price per unit. Your new mortgage is 65000 Because if you're going to live in a house, you can borrow 97.5%. The equity you, you need is the difference between the 65 and the 68,250. It's 238. So you got closing costs of $2,400. $4,700 is, is the gross amount you need between these two. You got a credit of 17700 right here. That's your credit, buddy. So you'll pull out $12,911 in cash without putting any money down. Now, some people say, hurt, you can't do that nowadays. No, you can do that. You can do that. And if anybody be interested, I will sell you the house and we will go through it. Now, of course, you got to have the right purchase agreement. You got to have the right language. It's got to have the right chronology of events that happen. Your inspection period, your mortgage approval period, all got to be timed in such a way that you never tell a lie and you won't go to jail and it won't be illegal. It will be legal and it will be done right. Wouldn't it make sense if there's so much bonus in the market that you could take and leverage and pull cash out? If you knew how, doesn't that make sense? Yes. Well, I'm going to show you how. Now, the bottom line is, what does it take? Class, those of you who would be interested, would you give me that sheet of paper, Mr. Cecilia? Because I get so tired up. I got four minutes to tell everybody about the bargain of a lifetime, about my value proposition for everybody. Here you go. These are our opportunities, everybody. First, I said you could be a student, an intern, an associate, a partner. <laughs> or a principal. And being a student is coming into the class learning, and once you do it, then you can be an intern because you can help. After that, you have a chance to get involved in deals. Terry, where's, where's Terry at here? Terry, uh, I got this here. Terry is a, uh, Terry, you here? Terry is an intern, and he's about to become a principal. Why is he about to become uh, well, as an intern, you have a right to make money off on the deal. You have the right to deal, you're in charge of the numbers, back and forth to do the structure of the deal so you will know every step. And you get all the communication back and forth to the until we go to a closing. And for that, you get cash and equity. This is Terry. Hello, how y'all doing? Now, Terry will be working with some of you guys running performance because he can run performance. Think about Terry's skill. He can take an apartment that will look at it and, and run a number on it and tell you how much you can borrow on it and tell you how to structure the deal. And I can tell you how to get in it without putting one penny in it. Terry is sitting in the middle of, of seeing millions made that he actually is participating. There's no way he can figure it out because nobody will tell him that. I want to develop this. I can come and tell you how to do a deal like, you know what I mean? But here you get a chance. If you want to be a, a developer, you get in to sit in and listen to find out how deals are done. 
Now, so basically, it's $12,900 in this example you will pull out in profit. And, and this is investing no money. So let's go over it. The mortgage is all you got. It's $65,000. So you have $45,000 uh, that you bought it for, $55,000 wholesale. You got to do some sweat equity. $3,100 in fees that you got that would be paid. $2,400 in closing costs. Total uses of cash is $56,100. And the excess to whoever bought the money is comes to $9,761. Now, if you're the broker, don't forget you get the closing fell I mean, the, uh, the commission. Which will push it up to 4000 or something. If you are the broker. If you're not a broker, you still pull it out. So what do you need, Herb? You need a credit score of at least 540. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? 540. And if you don't have a 540 credit score, get one. It don't take long to get a 540. As a matter of fact, you can roll in Norton Strather Academy and you can roll and we have a link for you to join us in the class for credit. So here's what I'm offering you. First, the boot cap is 499. Today it's going to be 399 though. See that? Woo! $399. This is the boot cap. I'm going to sequester you for two days. You belong to me. Saturday and Sunday at the Western Hotel. They're giving us the room and we're going to run through it. It's a grid. You're going to learn something that you cannot learn at the University of Michigan or Harvard. How to do deals. You'll walk in one way and you'll walk out another way. You know how to put deals together. Then later, if you want to do the live bidding, that means you're going to sit around just like this. We have some more tables. And you have to participate on the team. That means that it's for one week before the auction starts. And it's all during the auction. It starts at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. When we bid, you have to be here. Because the bidding open at 8, you got to be in your positions. Now, if you've done your proper underwriting, we got it all together, then we're okay. But usually at the end of the day, we're still looking at property. Because it's 22,000 every 15 minutes. Uh, 200 is rolling. It's a lot of action all day long. You understand? So it is uh, just to sit here and bid. And, and, but we have it up on the screen. We're buying. We're bidding. And you, your job is to go out as a team. You do your inspection, put out the sheets, to, uh, uh, and, and you bring them in. I wish I had the chance to go over your everything that you would, your package. And those of you who join us today, you get your package today. You can get started. Now, if you do both of them together, you get your discount on. Because both of them together, I think, is even $700. If you haven't got all of, all of your money, we'll take some Yang money. Right. Yen. Good money. Yang. Okay. Property management. $499 is $299. Those who want to learn how to professionally manage property. I'm talking about urban management now. <laughs> Let's get that straight. We're talking about managing urban properties. And ladies and gentlemen, and then live development. The live development course is $2,500. bucks. There's only 15 people who's going to be in that course because my partner who's in the course, which is a major university, is going to have 15 people too. It's going to be for 24 weeks. 10 weeks is going to be on their campus. I would love to tell you who they are, and there's a 99% chance we're going to do it, but I don't think I can say it right now. But it is the largest architectural engineering school, I think, in the, in the state of Michigan. Um, and we're going to joint venture, and we're going to redevelop the southwest corner of Grand River and Greenfield up to uh, Grand Mont subdivision. And we're going to de develop the business strip of Grand River and Greenfield, and we're going to do what you call a bid. When we're finished doing this development, we're going to say to the mayor and to the city of Detroit, here, duplicate this. We want one of these in each one of our districts. And we have, we're lucky today because we got one of our district managers, Reggie Red. Say hello, Reg. Hey. That's Reg. Reg is the district manager and the liaison person uh, for, with the mayor for District 1. And we're, and we're setting the pace. So you have a chance to 
get involved. I'm not here just here. Here's a book. Let me sell you something. No, sir. You got to bring something to the table. And if you're not have a burning desire, you don't even. It's no use to coming. You understand? I want people to just want to do this a burning desire. I'm only looking for developers. I'm only looking for entrepreneurs or those who would be a developer if they were shown how to do it. So ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to go to my website, download, become part of the students. And those who are here with me as part of here, I invite you all to become part of our class. I thank you very much. We're going to keep this open. I want to give you the dates. September the 13th and the 14th is our boot camp. And you can just focus on, on that for now. That's going to be two days at the Marriott. And it's going to teach you everything you need to know in order to be successful at the bidding. Everything you need to know, you're going to find out how to do it. And we're also going to have a chance to talk about auctions. Wayne County Auction and the Sheriff Auction. And even the bidding website auction. That the city of, of Detroit, we're going to cover auctions. So this is what's important, and one of and, and, and one of those topics is really a wonderful topic, and it is the how to win before you bid. How to win before you bid, and the other one is making ten thousand dollars in forty five minutes, and we're going to do it in class live. We're going to make. Ten thousand. I'm going to prove it because we're going to put together a deal. If we're set to go and there's opportunity, we're we're going to make a deal in class. And if there's ten calls made, one of them is going to go. Especially if they're all live. You understand? We're, we're going to take our legal news. We're going to break it down. We're going to find the owners immediately because I'm going to show you how to find the owners right away. You understand? We're going to get them. We're going to call them up on the intercom. We're going to negotiate. We're going to make a deal. We're going to make. We're going to show you how to make a deal without putting up any money. The class a month ago went down to Wayne County Auction, and they were having a party, buying other people's property. And I told the class, "There's only one problem: they're partying too quick." Because these sheriff deeds that they just bought, people could cash them out, just give them their money back with a little interest. They got six months to the deed. And you get a chance after the fact to look at the numbers. Oh, that's what you bought it for. Oh, this is what it's worth. Oh, this is easy. Six months? Hell, you can sell it six times. Think about that for a minute. But we'll talk about that. So I thank everybody for taking time out of your Saturday to be with me. We are committed. We're going forth. Thank you very much. Okay.